Growing up, my dad would always play music around the house, and I wondered what that music was. I asked him, and he told me ska. He also told me that there was a huge culture surge in the 80s, and this resulted in culture clashes between the ska skinheads and the mods. Since then, I've always wanted to know where they are now, and do they still have the same resentment for each other? I tracked down some local mods and skinheads to get their opinion on the past and to see if the culture is still alive. I meet up with a local mod that goes by the nickname Midget at a weekly rally meetup that he organised seven years ago. I wanted to know when the fascination started for Midget and what the conflict was like between the two cultures. The older boys, they sort of give you that, the buzz and all you want, that's, you wanted to be like them. Because I mean, well, I must have been, you would probably know better, John, but I must have been about 13, 13 12, 13. Was that about Yeah, yeah. I was me too. Yeah, just, just growing up, you loved it. All the bigger ones, you've seen, you seen these boys coming around in scooters, you went. And I think it was even before Quadrophenia came out. It's alright. Yeah. City Hall was the spot where everyone gathered, was the mods, right? But have you seen a gang of skinheads? I mean, skinheads, every all the areas, Shankle, Markets, Turf Lodge, you just, they were bad and slack. You just knew. I still get scared. You see, when I see a skinhead, like with the boots and all, it's still, I get shivers. You know, because they were so violent, they were real badasses. Have you have you ever gotten a fight yourself? I've been in fights, but not not for the mod or, or skinhead. Not, you know, I was no, I was just you know growing up in Belfast. I, I remember, I mean, getting in the in the certain in the certain in the galaxy getting in the Rodney disco. I mean, I was more or less a skinhead sort of disc, not disco, but there was more ads, there was mods there, but there were local boys. Yeah. But one, uh, other mods coming out of skinheads were already getting into it. Oh. But if you were a mod like from another no area or, or further down the road or something, the they, you were getting chased out. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Was there, a, was there <laughs> any a time where you thought that it kind of was getting out of hand between the conflict between well, skinheads and mods? Well, the conflict, it was a lot of running up being chased. It was like skinheads, have you heard skinheads? You just run, yeah. and people sometimes then it got sort of comical that people just seen the egg skin hit and somebody shouted it, and everybody run like, and the mood have been about <laughs> 20. <laughs> well, here, I still got this face, haven't I? You know, uh, yeah, uh, well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Dominic, Dominic's with us here, he's he's yeah. deaf and dumb, he's he would have been heavy in the he'd have got torn in the skinheads, he wouldn't, he, he didn't, he'd have if he get in there around any club, he'd have put the yeah, the sack would have been there with the snooker balls and he'd have fucking he'd have just got door and tell him he would that be like a like a, like a real oh why well if somebody like was giving him shit he'd have just he just got door and tell him he was the Hallians the Hallian mods which is a group of mods like 35 years ago oh we out there aye yeah he, he's been at it he's been here for fucking years like I know I've, I've heard other ones tell me about him he was a digger like yeah you know, don't get me wrong, he would never... I'm going to start it. He, he knows good guys and I with and all now, like... But, back then... Back then, the skinheads had a fucking guarantee to ban. Yeah. He'd have just got torn. Tell him there was no... There was no... But, he only he only done it if they were giving him grief. You know what I mean? He was never really, yeah. sort of... Until they never started. Yeah. yeah, sort of thing. Oh, I banker? Oh, I... I down at Banker, May Day was the whole big thing with the mods. Yeah. Uh, oh, he was get, getting beat up and all too, but he's, he, he's always been there from day fucking dad like, so. But yeah. no, it was all, and he, even even down at Beachmount, 
I mean, with the skinheads from Rodney, Tor Floyd, same thing, you had the mods fighting and stuff. I mean, the paramilitaries had to, I mean, up the center of the West Belfast. Yeah. There was ones had to step in and say, it's that's true, Billy. Because they say, look, listen, see if any, keep it up here and we'll get involved here because there was ones, I mean, there was ones starting to get stabbed and all, which was getting, it was, I mean, beyond getting it more, the whole fucking culture thing. And it just got really, you know, it was just then, back then, it was just crazier. Then, yeah, then yeah. Now it's everybody's mellowed out, everybody's into the fakes and stuff. Oh, I was, I was at a battle. See it? I see it. Uh, the scar where you got hit over here with a battle with a skinhead. Yeah. So do you think like do you think that there's been like changes over the years, like major changes to like when it comes to like mall culture, or do you think it's like re re like relatively the same? No no no. It's completely friendly. Friendly as I say. The scooters oh, sorry, the skinheads appreciate the scooters too. And a, and a lot of times because they've grew up that they were damn for would, look, would have loved the scooter back in the day but then that was too mod but then they didn't realize that you don't have to be a mod to have a, a vespa yeah you know that way mm. so then they have the families just grew up to have a bit of money they're buying a scooter and enjoying it after speaking to the mods for roughly an hour i made my way up to a local skinhead's ska cave that he built outside his own back garden Before I get into this car, but believe it or not, I was um an Adam and Alice fan. <laughs> so it was yeah. and so that's that's why I, that was about nineteen nineteen eighty, I was an Adam Mans fan. And at Christmas, my cousin bought me an LP with Mad Madness LP and I thought, like, who the hell is Madness? Was that L was that the L was that that LP or? So once I started listening out there, that was me hooked from, from nineteen eighty or eighty one. When was the when was the first time you ever got a skinhead? Well, I don't see there was a story that, I got, that, that we moved up in the progress in, in 82. So we did. And I met a big man, mate of mine called Tommy. And he was torturing me. He said, because in school they used to pull my hair and it's like me wiggling all because I had this map of long hairs with it and they, they would keep me going something shocking. So Tommy kept me going all the time. He said, for fuck's sake, would you get that hair? Because that's steady. What about my crummy and all? And the DM boots and the loafers and you've still got that hair. So I got a cut. We're down in the we call there we we barbers down there at um say Castle Street, Maguire's was it? Maguire's. Maguire's, we was there for years. Down there, got the whole thing shaved off in a flat top. Wow. So, so of course, like the next morning, I was late for school for a half an hour, and I walked into the classroom. The whole classroom busted out laughing, couldn't contain themselves laughing. So they said because I had the hair cut down, and they were calling me all sorts of names. There's there's pole glass socks and all over coming. Is that, get, is that where you got their nickname sucks? I got it from that. And then they found out my birthday was on the same day as this. So they kept it up slagging in my school. Mur and then I went into pole glass. And it just, from 1982, I have that nickname. So do you have like any recalls of any altercations when it came to like mods yourself? Or were you a part of it? Not not really. I mean, I, I knocked about up, up, up here, up in pole glass where... Most of us were all, there was a couple of mods, but there was a good lot of skinheads too, but there was just a couple of, a couple of incidents in school. I remember one time in school, uh, there was a couple of mods in our class and, and a couple of skinheads, and, and I, I joked with one of them saying, they used to wear uh, long green parkers. I said, for fuck's sake, yeah, I'd, I'd stick a big dress. Murder broke out. He threw a dick at me and there was murder and teachers pulled us all apart. <laughs> but I've never really, not, not that, I didn't really encounter stuff. There was, I knew there were certain groups that, Stood stu stu at certain places down the town, like the skinheads in Castle Street, and then the malls were around towards the city hall. Now, so I never really went down that. Like, see, to be honest with you, like, I mean, if I hadn't had scam my life, I would have taken a lot of a lot of a lot of happiness away from me because the kids grew up and we were over in England, same madness and and this 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 place here, my scar kids, as as they call it. It's just so so many great weekends. I've actually met by going to see Madness over in England about eleven years ago. House of Fun weekend. I met a couple, a couple of guys. Stand stand beside me with the same clothes on, and we're joking with each other. And became friends. Then they came over here. We go over there and see the, the times of of having them all. Like it's been brilliant.
And it's amazing, like, when I was younger, the te- the test HR, you can h- hate at the music. But see, now, they sort of respect it. Mm. I mean, I've had my ears scan nights in here, I was still, and I've still put, like, mod stuff on too. And I'm over there, man, this weekend, I've seen the, the guys doing the, the soul dancing. The soul dancing, I think it's class. absolutely brilliant, like, this. This has shown me that over time, things change. And no matter what the difference, people can still come together. <laughs>